Lauren Durkowski does get the start this afternoon. She uh, took the loss, and now we get to see this potent Indiana offense as from Purdue. And boy, you talked about her in the open. Taryn Kern is a true freshman that uh, is driven in. As a team, this quad for Eighth pitch of the at-bat is hammered into left field and style with the Bassett leadoff home run. What a fabulous at-bat for Cora Bassett to be able to capitalize as the dominant to start off the game with her fifth home run of the season. She has been able to do big things at the top with speed, but they're able to get it done with a big swing. Hey, steps in for the first time. She had two home runs in game two of the... And she gets a base hit all the way to the wall. Kern running. Well, getters have seen full counts. That's called a strike on the inside corner for just one hit so far in the series for her. 1-1. One, one. Pounded into left field. That will bring Kern home with the second run of the game. Quickly, I was concerned that Stone was not going to be able to make it to second base. And had this ball not been cut off by the shortstop, that hit came off the bat so hard that Alabama, who is also their best starting. Fielded by Livingston at first, but it advances. That have been so good, but they saw a lot of departures, which has really impacted not only the. The appeal, and they're saying that Parker went. Complete games, one against Memphis, one against Nebraska, hoping to get another one here. Throws in the low. See Blair, the only player in the uh, starting lineup with a chunky batting average of third in women's lacrosse. This is Michigan and Indiana. And we tuned in just in time to see Ellie Sealer get a double to lead things off. First pitch swinging, sends that into center just off the walls. And Sealer it shows that they are not going to sit down quietly. It's been a rough series for them, not able to put up a ton. More, and you're seeing that here with runners in scoring position. Hit to the right side of the infield. The throw home is in time. Other way, but with the defense in, this is a pretty bang bang play by Taryn Kern at second base. Home to eight. Sends that to the second baseman Kern. Tried to turn two. Chopped off the glove of Copeland. Yes, Indiana Langford playing against Indiana. I asked, well, then why doesn't she have more stolen bases? Talked by Brooke Benson to end the inning. We'll have more on that. Sting got three hits, all of them for extra bases. A couple of double innings now on the season, 17 wins. But lost Kettleman, so second straight in. Sophomore on this team, Indiana, their starting lineup very successful in the years to come. After the walk, how about a three pitch strikeout of Mitchell? Good recovery by Durkowski. Two of them in the first inning. Here's Benson who sends it to the wall and the number nine hitter, her turn to hit a home run. number of home runs second just to Cassidy Kettleman this long ball is her third home run of the year she was the most improved offensively during her freshman and soft so a couple of homers already Cora Bassett led the game off with a homer but does have another year of eligibility left strikeout number four big one with Kern coming up by finalists for the NFCA National Freshman of the Year. Look at those. In Indiana, and they visited the campus. She goes down looking. She doesn't strike out much. Good elevation and separation of her pitches with a drop and a rise. Also throws a curve. We 
ahead, 0-2, gets her on three pitches. Two pitch, nice frame by the catcher. Get kind of one base at a time with her. They will develop that'll work. Two out single for McVeigh. See where has been. Touch your stride. And you don't have much time to do that. That is sent to the wall and just stays in the park for you. Taylor Minnick leading things off for Indiana. They're up 4-1 in the top. Including Minnick, who you see, who is from Bloomington, sends that out. Third home run of the game for the Hoosiers. Indiana came to play quiet right. in that back motion. Uses the legs, drives right through. It got the program has gone on the ascent with these young Hoosiers. First pitch swinging Stone, who had an RBI double her first time up. Hit too big and is able to bring a smile to Copeland's face after watching that. Sends it into right field where it's playable for Matea for yes. S. But I'm still sure. getting there. I'm Big sure deal. the Sixers are going to try to. Full count. Hit on the ground. Fielded by LeClaire. Throws over to leaders. That is a quiet leader that leads by example. Good at bat. To get the walk. Able to hit these fans here at Michigan. Deep. Ali Mataya sends one into short left field and a terrific running catch. By Kettleman. Left. That's a difficult one as this ball continues to die. Kettleman has to really hurry up to get there. Nice slot. As she continues, you saw her take a selfie earlier as she continues to roam. Lexi Blair steals it. Six feet stolen base of the season. And this is a fabulous throw, but Blair. Once all season. Now Kiki Thole tries to get her in. Laced into right field. Blair is being sent home. And she avoids Blair able to get around the tag by Warwick. Great look. Bonnie was a terrific player for Michigan and has been around her second team all Big Ten. Her numbers down a bit this year. That's off the glove of Warwick. Cole able to scroll into second base. Kingston facing the 2-2. Laced into right field, but perfectly positioned. Parker gathers it in and to start this game in the second inning, a relief, I should say. The start went to Montgomery Jr. at home. Anchor up the middle. Kern, not in time. And this ground ball back up the middle is a little bit misplayed by Kern. It gets in to get it. A quick transfer out of the glove and rushes the throw to first base over to Sarah Stone. And look at Ramey. What a trick. Cutting the lead to two. Lexi Voss struck out face on today as she came in to begin the second inning. Another throw down. And Langford going to stay put at second as the throw got away. She was the game two winner yesterday. Voss sends it sky high and Kern retreats. She was able to lead off the second inning with a walk but now trying to use that short Benson home run. Thrown out by McVeigh, the shortstop. I love that she played basketball, you know, not just a one sport athlete. Here she goes again, little double clutch and not in time. Also yet in the Big Ten, they expect it to be within a couple of years for extra bases, three home runs and two doubles. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, and the reason that is such a huge... Trying to get this out and leave Taryn Kern. Kern, along with Taylor Roby, leading the country in home runs this season. That has a charge in it. Lexi Blair, though, is a tremendous outfielder. Audrey LeClaire struck out looking the first time she faced Copeland. 
puts the ball in play. It gets under the glove of Kern to start things off in the fourth. And most of that power coming from Kiki Thole, the number four hitter. Gets the punt down. Terrific sacrifice by McVeigh as LeClaire team last year. She also played high school basketball. Her mom played softball at Mission. Any blow that might come that way. That's under the glove of Benson. Runner held at third, and then as the throw comes all the way into one away, first base is open. Let's see how they decide. Indiana is squeezing her defensively. That is enormous. Well, that Second and third. Let's tie right back to Copeland. Ooh, a little bit of a high flip, but it's handled by Stone to campus and has been able to flip the script for Indiana, able to... Gurkowski goes upstairs and she strikes her out for the second straight time. Three different players, including Taylor Minnick, who hit one the last time. That time, right back to Gurkowski, who gloved it and flipped it over. Sends that into right field, playable for Mataya. They've left one runner on in at least every inning. In fact, six overall, and that's a first pitch out for Thole, who lines to the situational execution. And so far, Michigan has left six runners on base. They do have a good RPI, however, even though their record is not what we're used to seeing. They've lost 20 games, in fact, for the first time. Ahead of them at 32. Stabbed by Benson, who just laid out. Boss, nice swing, and it drops into short left field. Two on with two out. Chad Spittler, he rings her up. Over the glove of Copeland, and no play. Kern throws it over to third. And hey, you know, Lauren Gurkowski in the circle. Little shaky start, gave up three home. Copeland is 0 for 2, unusual for her, and she got a her. You have to attack the changeup when you 73. Gurkowski really doing a good job. That one punched into left field, plunks in front of Blair. Parker gets the one out base hit. Gentleman gets the bump down. The throw by Thole just in time. Michigan not equipped for it. Here's Kinsey Mitchell had an infield single and also struck out. Right up the middle. A slow roller, so Parker is being waved in. Indiana with home runs in each of the first three innings. Bassett led off the game with a home. Popped up, easy play for Durkowski to end the inning. Who is spending a ton of time. That's a the great field. walk by McVeigh to start off the sixth. Pretty much in love with that gorgeous dog, and now Ellie Sealer leading things off. She has. Backhanded by Benson, and they throw over. Lexi struck out looking her last time up with a couple of runners on. Blair punches it. Does she do it again? Not in time. Even Benson and her very good arm. Two, two, hit it to the wrong person. Benson, so solid over there at short, ends the inning. Up of the lineup, Cora Bassett. Hard shot right at Audrey LeClaire. Holy cow, that one. The season tied for the national lead with Taylor Roby from Louisville. Popped her up. Kelsey's done a really good job with her since that first at bat. Easy. In fact, they've only had three hits. Check that. 0-2. A little defensive swing. McVeigh grabs it. So those seniors 
playing their last game here, including Livingston not be on the field next year. Indiana Langford trying to move the runner over, called safe over there first. Seniors coming up now. Hit right at the third baseman, Bassett, who recovered. Honored today at senior day, gets a base hit. And Michigan going station to station. Yesterday was able to keep Michigan to just one run in that complete game. And it's up to Ella McVay, the number nine hitter who singled off Copeland back. In that is off the third baseman, Copeland, fair ball. Michigan able to get a couple of runners home. Brooke Bentz in the shortstop's able to recover it, but Michigan creating has it has been so solid over there on the third base slot that this ball of Sealer now, who doubled to start this game off and singled out. One, two. That's sent into short left field, tracking it. Squeezing it and ending the game. Kettleman on the day and they sweep the series. Indiana put a ton of power up in the beginning of the game. It was those three home runs that Michigan ended up leaving 11 runners on base. They lost.